Hello, my name is Sydney Ray and I'm going to be doing a demonstrative speech. Right now I am looking at my phone and my computer because this is the third time I have filmed this and I do not want to lose it again. So if you see me looking back and forth, I am just trying to make sure that it gets caught this time. So I am doing a demonstrative speech today and the video I'm going to be talking about was a speech that was released to the public in January of 2016. So this video was released to a popular social media platform we know as YouTube. This was released by TED Talk, which is also another popular social media platform. So the speaker I'm gonna be talking about, his name was Walbert, Robert Waldinger, and he labeled the video, What Makes a Good Life? And he really goes into depth about talking about what makes a good life. Robert goes on to say that this is one of the longest studies that has ever been done talking about happiness and how it can be achieved. So I chose this speech because we live in a world where we are constantly trying to achieve happiness and we are going from thing to thing looking for happiness and trying to fill that hole where we may have a little bit of sadness. And a lot of people do this by finding things in their lives that are thrilling to them but are not exactly good. They just fill them with adrenaline, which makes them think that they are happy when they actually are not. So many people love to drugs, alcohol, other addictions that are not good, but they feel like they are happy. So um, this um, speech definitely stood out to me when I saw it, when I was looking for this speech to do my speech on, and I was immediately drawn to the title because it said study. And for me, I am a very big study kind of person. I like my statistics. I like my graphs. I like to know that this is research based, not just opinion based. And I think that stood out to me the most. And also another thing that stood out to me was happiness. Everybody looks for happiness all of the time. And especially people who have felt sadness, depression, we understand the hardships that it takes and mental physical roles that it has on you and we want to be able to find ways that we can achieve happiness so let's talk about this study just a little bit more so this study has been going on for about 75 years now but was not actually started until 1968 so there was four main professors robert waldinger being one of the four who was like let's do this study let's get it together and let's figure out why and how to be happy. So they got 268 male Harvard students to be in this experiment. One of them, which is very popular and we know to this day as John F. Kennedy. Unfortunately, John F. Kennedy did pass in 1963, so he was not a part of the official starting point of the experiment, but he was definitely a lot of the big minds behind it when they were about to start it. So when asked, when all of these young men were asked what makes them happy and what they want to see with their life to be happy, they said that they will either be rich or they will be famous. So we will go on to see that that is completely the opposite and that many of these men did not even achieve that, but we will, we'll move into that a little bit later. So let's go into a little bit about who Robert was as a guy, as a person. Um, he was born in 1951, he is now 70 years old. And when he released this TED talk, he was 65, but he right now is an American psychiatrist and professor at the Harvard Medical School and has been teaching there for many, many years. So um, let's talk about the TED Talk audience. As we know, TED Talks usually have about 100 people and that's how many he had at his specific talk as well. So he was very interactive with these people and he was creating good eye contact and he was really making sure that these people felt connected, which I thought was really, really great. But um, we'll talk about how this research was conducted and how they kept up all of this research throughout this time because as I said earlier, it is still going on to this day. So when they had these original 268 men, they would go to their houses, interview them, say, here's a survey, take it. How have you been, basically? So they would send them to doctors so they could do testing on them there so they could really pile up all this information and figure out why and how can we be happy. So I thought that was very interesting. And now, to, to this day, the, 
this uh, experiment is still going on, but we have unfortunately lost many of our young men who started this experiment. And there's only 19 men left who are now all in their 90s, which I mean, go them. But they have allowed all of their offspring to be in this experiment, which I think is just amazing. There are now 1,300 men and women who are involved in this research and are continuing this study. Um, when we look at these 1,300 people, we see that none of them, not none of them, some of them are rich and famous, but none compared to what the 85% said earlier. They believed that that's who they would be and that's why they'd be happy. But we see now that these people are lawyers, they are bricklayers, they are teachers, they are doctors, they are FedEx drivers. They are, they have chosen a path in life that makes them happy. And I think that's very interesting because it's so far away from what people thought that was going to make them happy. Excuse me. So I think this speech definitely impacted me because it's something I have looked for a lot. I have found that I have had a hole in my my soul, my heart, that I've been looking for happiness and I've gone to people, I've gone to things looking for that happiness and nothing has ever filled it. So I saw this and I was like jumping at the opportunity. I was like, how can I learn how to do that? And I, just by the views on the video, other people have definitely thought the same exact thing. So I think this video was very um, rememberable for me and I think I'll remember it for a long time. It was very informative, which again, as I said earlier, I love. And it really gets you to think. He says things that make your mind really, the gears start to turn a little bit, saying that makes sense. I want to do this. How can I achieve this happiness? So um, I, how I think this speech has affected me, I just by watching him, I see how he's going about things and how he's keeping that eye contact. He has 100 people in the audience, but he is still looking at this person, this person, this person, and is drawing them all in. He does ask them some questions throughout this video, which I think makes people, he's not expecting an answer, but he makes them think. So I think that was a very good tactic that he used. So when I am doing speeches, I want to be able to be like that. I want to get the point across. That's why I'm here for the speech. I want to be clear. I want to have that eye contact, which is kind of hard right now because I'm looking back and forth, but I want to be well-dressed. I'm representing this speech, this article, whatever it is. And I'm also representing myself. I am presenting myself. So I want to be able to come informed, looked good, look good and be ready to speak. So if we kind of go back a little bit, we um, the initial question was, how can we find happiness? And the answer is having a community is the number one thing that all of these people said, whether it's a school community, a church community, any kind of community where people are involved, whether it's family, people who have bigger families are more likely to be happy because they have that connection with all these people where they can talk to, they can sit down and have a deep conversation with. And I think it's, we, you can definitely see the difference between children who are close with their parents and children who are not and how there's a happiness level where it's, it's not even. And I think another reason I chose this article was, or this speech because the video, um, is because I have seen it firsthandedly in the last two years with COVID. We have seen children, elderly, everyone taken away from their family, from their friends. They have been isolated in their houses. They have not been able to experience that connectedness and find that community. And I think that has definitely taken a toll on people. And we have seen depression rates skyrocket. We have seen suicides skyrocket. And I think that goes to tell that this experiment is foolproof. We, we know the facts. So why aren't we taking those facts and putting them into real life and helping these people pre prevent them from depression and giving them that happiness that everybody wants and that we all look for. So I just thought that that was very interesting. And it's, this article has, it says a lot. And especially with the past couple years that we've been going through it, I think it says even more. But this was my speech by Robert Wal Waldinger. And I think it was a very good speech and it has definitely left an impact on my life. So thank you for watching.